We're just outside London and I'm with the muralist Richard Bagley. We're on our way to look at some paintings that he did in a country house. Well, I haven't been down here for seven years and this is an absolute beautiful day to visit the site of, um, of, of my murals. These are like visiting old friends. I've spent months working on these and um, it's, it's a joy always to visit them, to see, to see them in situ again. It's fantastic. Richard Bagley makes his living with pleasant, sunny murals. The first one I saw was in a London restaurant and he's done dozens like this. But I've heard there can be a dark side to Richard's work. I'm curious about that. In the grounds of the house, he could get inspiration from either side. Say so you've met before? Yes, this is one of the stars. I spent hours working out those skin turns. This is the client's favourite horse. So it stars in the uh, mural. Lovely brown turns. Lovely, aren't you? There did seem to be something dark about the artist, but I wasn't getting it. Maybe it would help to go inside the house and see his mules. The first mule is in a difficult circular space and it shows the walled garden outside. It shows it brick by brick. This one was done by, we took, took a series of photographs, stuck them together, took the best bits. Then this is actually a 12 foot length of canvas. And there, I count them one day, can you imagine when you're doing this, there's 11,000 bricks. Each brick is usually coated two or three times to get the right hue of color for a week. But I mean, they're beautiful to paint because you get such a build up of textures. Every single brick is different, that's the joy. So this is actually the garden inside the house. Absolutely. Richard Bagley's other mural in the house still doesn't seem to have much of the dark side. Maybe that woman looks a bit sinister, but Richard's dark side really comes out somewhere else. Painting murals for a long, pretty murals for a long time, is, is lovely, but you don't really feel like you've got a cornerstone as an artist. So this is inspired by my reaction to these, this is three or five fellows that were acquitted for the murder of Stephen Lawrence. Mm -hmm. And on the, on the public inquiry, which is the second one, he was murdered in 93 and the second one was in 96, there was, there was some footage of, of these boys coming out after court and they were just so vicious and so full of themselves that I looked at these people and I just felt such hatred for them. So I thought, well, why not change this into art? Because without passion, art doesn't exist. So we have, here we have three of those five boys. And how did you feel when you were doing the paintings? Were you angry? It was a feeling of uh, an adventure. It was going somewhere different. Uh, totally, there's an area I'd never been before. So not just is it the actual subject matter, it's the colours, the technique, the use of dark colours, light colours, this is matte, this is shinier. So it's an adventure. There are questions, obviously, subject matter, but that's important, that's the passion, that's the feeling of, you look around, these guys are ugly. Let's, let's find out, you know, where does the feeling come from? What is driving these people? Obviously, mostly it's aggression. This, this is a gentleman who's affected every, every person's life uh, here in London. One time or another, I think we've run across him. Something that is absolutely uniquely British the white van driver. You, when you meet this guy, he has his own set of rules. There's something, but when a guy gets in, in a van, a white van, behind the wheels, something happens. It's almost like a demon possesses him. He gets in there, he's in control of a chariot, which is the, the reason why, you know, some of the characteristics here, we have a lovely little dent here caused by someone who wouldn't budge for him. And I've heard tell that white van drivers actually carry and buy two wing mirrors at a time. Because whilst one is here, when they're going down the road and they don't want to give way, they will continue going and they would much rather blast their mirror aside knowing that they're going to cause damage to the other car than give way. It's a matter of pride, matter of pride. And then around the corner they put the spare one in. Obviously this one 
he's had his accident and he can't be bothered. I've turned him down. I had him so grotesque. His eyes were bulging. Fuck off, you Now, I had a friend who is a builder and has got a van. Uh, Fuck off, you Graham! Fuck off. Sorry, darling. Language, I've told you before. Fuck off, you And do you know Graham? How do I know Graham? Well, sadly, I'm married to him. <laughs> Uh, when he's like this, I'd rather not be. I really don't like that painting at all. I find it so aggressive and vile and violent and, uh, no, makes him look really ugly and uh, nasty inside. I don't like it at all. <laughs> to me this uh, painting because in fact it's the opposite I mean actually quite intimidated by by football fans uh, there was a time when I was in uh, in Chelsea I got stuck in a traffic jam and all the fans came out uh, I remember feeling so scared I was chilled right down to my innards for a second as they looked into the car and they looked in I felt like a little person in a, in a sardine thing uh, but again it's been very cathartic because this whole experience of doing this uh, trying to get out in, amongst the football fans and all of a sudden, uh, I'm not so afraid of them. So um, this is just one main figure here. This is the England fan. This is, this is a, mis a mismatch. And I wanted a kind of a Hogarth scene here almost. That each person has a character. And it's so much fun to paint. I mean, there's a lot of people to paint here. So if you get into each personality, then uh, hopefully you end up with something interesting. Someone said you can almost hear the roar of the crowd. This guy at the front. Is he cheering a goal or is he about to... He was an England supporter away and he was leading crowds and there were policemen around him. So I, I, th this is an England fan. This is why the whole, th this is actually the mismatch. Any football fan would say this is actually several scenes placed together, if you like. Because this is Millwall, Chelsea supporters, all kind of mixed in. I, I've found individuals, characters here and there, or I've made characters up, I've changed them. The only real figure is this guy is, a football, is an England football fan. And, I, and he was irresistible, because I think you probably noticed by now, we have the, the hand that comes out and the roar, because again, this mouth thing is happening, this intimidation, this action. And how did this come about? This is in 2002, and the BMP was just getting popular again in, in the UK, which is a slightly worrying thought. And then backed up by other images I saw of the, of the neo-Nazis in Germany and Austria. So uh, th these are people which I haven't got a lot of sympathy with. So again, it's coming from inspired feelings. And characters as well. I mean, look at these characters, they're brilliant. And coincidentally, in this particular painting, was the first time I actually uh, stumbled across using this, which is the, you know, the hand coming out, which is a great way of pulling people into, into the, the painting. So the idea is to drag all those people into these horrific figures. It's to show, it's, it's really also, it's a warning. This could be happening. This could be happening to us soon. So I think it's important, again, it's taking a bit of responsibility in art to actually say to people, these are ugly people and they're existing in our society. And have you ever come across any BMP members in uh, your life? Well, that's a really good, that's a really good point. So, to get more authentic, I actually went down and photographed some meetings where there were neo-Nazis. But funny enough, I actually ended up befriending some of them because they called me over and said, what are you photographing, mate? And I said, well, I'm, I'm a painter. Oh, yeah. Do you fancy me then? You know, and showing off their tattoos, and there was a, you know, in the end, you, you understand they're human beings. So for me, it's fairly cathartic. It's actually quite an interesting process. So, what inspired you to paint a policeman? Ah, well, these were inspired by um, the May Day uh, anarchists marching in 2000, 2001. They, they made a lot of bother in the city, broke glass, and, and basically made a nuisance themselves. I went along with another cameraman friend of mine, we spent the whole day in between the policemen, the anarchists, in and out, and uh, unfortunately I was after getting a, a, um, a disturbing anarchist doing something wrong, but unfortunately the best shot of the day was the policeman. Um, and uh, this wasn't my shot, but without a doubt he demonstrated the most interesting force. There, there is a little bit of social commentary, I've been a little bit naughty, I've taken artistic license, the skin turns. Uh, there is a pig-like quality to this that was irresistible. The thing is, which I'd like to point out, actually, I was in awe of the police in many aspects of the policing. They were very, very restrained for the most part. And there have been people pushing them to, 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 the, to, to the limit. But there is a limit, and they do get pushed, and they overreact. And if you're in the way of when they do overreact, it is dangerous.